As we practice our social distancing here in studio, California is taking other measures to stop the spread of the virus. Yeah, their governor, Gavin Newsom, issued a statewide stay-at-home order, and this went into effect last night and is in place until further notice. We can make decisions to meet moments, and this is a moment we need to make tough decisions. This is a moment where we need some straight talk, and we need to tell people uh, the truth. Now, the governor hopes people will voluntarily obey those orders. Well, COVID-19 is causing a lot of changes and disruptions to classrooms across the country. Today, more changes are coming to campuses in the metro area. Matt is live with how some students are being forced to pack their bags. Matt? Yeah, Julia, good morning to you. It's been really a chaotic week, right, for education. That includes K through 12, where students are learning that classes will be canceled at least until May, possibly until the end of the school year. Well, this is also having a pretty big impact on higher education, including at IUPUI right behind me. In fact, IUPUI and all IU campuses, including the main one in Bloomington, will now have students moving out beginning today. That's because those campuses will basically be shutting down. This is a big change for students who have relied on campus housing that comes to an end today, meaning students will be moving out. This is because classes will be online only, not just for the foreseeable future, but for the rest of the semester. Over at Ivy Tech, a similar situation today where all campus locations throughout Indiana will be closing today. That begins at 5 o'clock tonight when all locations will be shut down until further notice. Now, advising and financial services will still be available for students online. And, you know, another big area, this is really hitting students hard, right? We've heard about spring break, but there's also that huge impact, especially for high school students who will not be able to have prom this year, and many of them are now learning they will not be able to have those commencement exercises, that historic moment of walking across the stage, getting your diploma and turning your tassel, so to speak. So, so many new normals, everyone across Indiana, across America, now having to deal with Ben and Julia. Yeah, you just feel for those kids, Matt. It is so hard, especially this time in their lives. And here at 434, we have a 13 Investigates Consumer Alert. Congress is rushing to approve that trillion-dollar stimulus package, which would apparently send thousands of dollars directly to Americans in need. But while lawmakers kind of work to get you that money, scammers are already finding ways to try and take it from you. Those scam emails are popping up in some inboxes requesting your information to get your $1,000 check but there are easy red flags to spot. We're going to walk you through those. Look for any misspellings or grammatical errors. Be on the lookout for emails asking for tons of personal information like bank account numbers and social security numbers. And always look at the email address itself. If it's a Gmail or a non-government address, it's a hoax. But since Congress hasn't approved this plan yet, it's hard to know how people will be contacted and what they need to do. So the Federal Trade Commission is actually trying to get ahead of this sharing the things they don't they won't do under any potential plan they will not ask you to pay anything up front they won't ask for your social security bank account or credit card numbers and remember there's no official plan approved just yet so anyone promising to get you money is lying and possibly trying to scam you well with restaurants and stores closing plants shutting down indiana's unemployment rate is spiking in the last three days, more than 20,000 Hoosiers filed for unemployment. Compare that to the same time last year when just over 3,000 filed for the entire week. If you're needing to file, our Alan Carter found ways to make the process easier. Filing for unemployment for most people will start at your computer. You can go to the state website, unemployment.in.gov, and they'll walk you through a claim. But of course, not everyone has access to the internet, so your other option is to go and find an office. Although some of them, including here in Marion County, are closed right now. You cannot file a claim over the phone, although they will answer to help troubleshoot issues with the online process. But as you can imagine, they're getting quite a bit of calls right now. Either route you take, there is some information you'll need to have ready. We asked for some information off of their state issued ID card, uh, so a driver's license is helpful. Uh, things like their most recent pay stub, uh, or information about partial earnings if they worked a portion of the week can be really helpful. And once you file a claim, be aware that it could take some time for it to get processed. Getting the first payment could take anywhere from 8 to 21 days, but it will come weekly after that. And you also want to know that it won't cover all of what you were making. The maximum benefit amount in Indiana is $390, so uh, there, there becomes a certain point where you reach that cap. Uh, but for most individuals, it's going to be about half of their of their weekly wage. And you can find all of this information about how to file a claim 
by going to our website, WTHR.com. Alan Carter, Channel 13, Eyewitness News. And we do have all that information and more about the coronavirus on our website, WTHR.com slash coronavirus.